to our top story this morning. The winds of normalization swept across the White House as the UAE and Bahrain officially signed a peace deal with Israel. At the lavish White House ceremony hosted by the US President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump, the foreign ministers of Bahrain and the UAE signed the Abraham Accord with the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The accord has been printed in three languages, that is Hebrew, Arabic and English. The President of the United States, the Prime Minister of the State of Israel. This is peace in the Middle East without blood all over the sand. I say it. Right now, it's been blood all over the sand for, for decades and decades and decades. That's all they do is they fight and kill people, and nobody gets anything. After almost 25 years, the 45th President of the United States has recreated history at the South Lawn of the White House. Sitting beside the leaders of Israel, Bahrain, and the UAE, Trump has broken a long-standing taboo when they signed these agreements, normalizing relations with Israel in a strategic realignment of Middle Eastern countries against Iran. The back-to-back -back agreements, which have drawn bitter condemnation from the Palestinians, marks an improbable diplomatic victory for Trump. However, Trump has promised to protect the Palestinian cause and at the same time satisfy Israel's demands. Yeah, I think they come along and uh, they're already, uh, obviously we speak to them. Uh, they've come a long way. We used to pay them $750 million a year when I got here and I said to people that negotiated with them before, why did you pay when they treat the United States with, with such disrespect? They speak so badly. Death to America, death to Israel. I said, we give them $750 million a year. I said, why didn't somebody cut off those payments? Well, we didn't think it would be appropriate. I said, well, I do. And I cut off the payments to them, as you know. But other countries give them money. You deal with very rich countries. And these countries are now all signing with us. They're all beside with us, all of them. I spoke with the King of Saudi Arabia. We had a great conversation. And uh, I think positive things will happen there, too. He's a great gentleman. And uh, the Crown Prince, we spoke with the Crown Prince. So we've made tremendous strides. And this is peace in the Middle East without blood all over the sand. I say it. Right now, it's been blood all over the sand for for decades and decades and decades. That's all they do is they fight and kill people, and nobody gets anything. And this is uh, this is strong peace, really strong peace. Far, and it's a different way. Uh, we went in the back door, but I call it going in the very smart door. We went in the smart door, and we're getting people. And the Palestinians will absolutely be a member. I don't say that with any bravado. I just tell you the Palestinians will be a member at the right time. At the right time. The Israeli Prime Minister has called the peace accord a pivot in the history which will herald a new dawn of peace. Listen in. And the blessings of the peace we make today will be enormous. First, because this peace will eventually expand to include other Arab states and ultimately it can end the Arab-Israeli conflict once and for all. Now, for more insights into this historic peace deal, Jagrati Dave is joining us live from Washington, D.C. Jagrati, thanks for joining us. Now, tell us a little bit about the global significance of this historic peace deal and, of course, how all parties will benefit from it. Well, many people are describing this as a really significant moment for the Trump administration in terms of foreign policy. And um, Bahrain and the UAE are only the third and fourth countries um, to normalize relations with Israel after Egypt and Jordan. So in that sense, it really is um, a, a very significant moment. Um, uh, the the uh, the deal itself, um, the accord itself, um, signed at the White House. Um, you know, the, the president there. You the clips that you played suggested right. that other. Arab nations will follow, though he didn't say which. And really, the significance, some commentators are saying that, you know, what will be really significant is looking at what Saudi Arabia does. And if it, as a major player in the region, decides to follow in UAE and Bahrain's footsteps, they haven't said, uh, intimated that they are going to do so. But some suggest that, you know, Bahrain... Um, 
in Bahrain's involvement was sort of done with the blessing um, of Saudi Arabia. So it'll be interesting to see really how um, it reshapes uh, the, uh, the region. Right. Now, U.S. President Donald Trump is believed to have brokered this deal and is perceived to be a huge win for him in the run-up to the U.S. elections, of course. So what are your thoughts on that? So those who are supportive of the president, as I say, say this is a huge deal, a momentous occasion. The three parties involved um, have described it as historic. Um, and it will be supported by many of those within the United States who um, are supportive of um, positive actions towards Israel. So that would be evangelicals, mm -hmm. evangelical Christians in particular. Um, it's expected to boost the president's support in that quarter. However, there are critics of this uh, of this accord. Some uh, who say that really what this is, it's a pact between countries who uh, have a mutual uh, rivalry with Iran. It's not not right. really a peace deal that is addressing the central issue, which is the conflict between Israel and Palestine. Mm -hmm. uh, many view that uh, that is a significant problem. And indeed, Palestinians say that really the crucial issue is um, the uh, is, is Israel stepping away from the West Bank, right. the annexation of the West Bank as a pathway to peace. And that isn't certain that that's going to happen. Right. Now, you mentioned Palestine and the Palestinians have, of course, denounced uh, this uh, peace deal and reports suggest that rockets have been fired into Gaza. And this is, of course, a fallout of the peace deal, while Donald Trump says that he will, of course, protect the Palestinian cause as well. At the same time, satisfy Israel's demand. So can we expect more of these attacks as a backlash to this Abraham Accord? I mean, this is um, a deal. Th th these, th th this is something that um, President Trump is trying to really put forward um, at a time, you know, two months to b before the election, p pitching himself as, you know, the master deal maker, the master diplomat now, the right. peacemaker. Um, and, you know, you hear lots of um, Republicans coming out talking about how this is going to be the president's legacy. But of course, as you say, um, critics of this accord and um, those who are Palestinians and those who are supportive of the Palestinian cause will say that this does nothing for this. Do, this does nothing for Palestinians mm -hmm. um, and that any manu all the maneuvers that the president has been making in their view is purely for Israel. And so given the tension in the region are, um, you know, conti continue to be uh, on tricky terrain. It is difficult to see how, um, you know, a real mo uh, momentous peace can be achieved if that central issue of um, clashes and uh, tensions between the conflict between Israel and Palestine isn't really addressed. So it remains to be seen how the region uh, shifts as a result of these accords, whether there's pressure on Palestine, on Palestinians to change, on the Palestinian leadership to change change their approach or whether they will continue to put pressure on Arab nations um, as they've done so far to say that well until there is a resolution of issues such as the West Bank um, to uh, try to isolate Israel but given that now you've got these two countries that have signed this accord perhaps the power dynamics do change somewhat so it'll be a way a rem it remains to be seen exactly what happens next. Right Jagruti thank you so much for all your inputs on the story and thank you for joining us this morning.